Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Battle for a Healthy Voice. I'm Dave Moyer, vocal coach, and I've been doing this for over 50 years. I've been actually trained for way over 50 years. And I just want you to know that our host and our producer is Sonny Galt. And here's Sunny. All right. Hi, David. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for checking out our videos. Hopefully, you've subscribed to our YouTube channel. We're releasing a couple videos a week, and so you don't want to miss any of the new content we're putting out. Today, we are talking about different musical genres using something called Pure Bel Canto. If you go to our website, purebelcanto.com, you can learn more about it. David and I did a video course that teaches you more about it, so you can check that out. And David is also going to be doing group coaching lessons mm -hmm. online mm -hmm. and you even have an opportunity to get a free lesson a free one-on-one -on -one lesson with David we'll tell you more about that at the end of this video so David when we're singing country we can still use pure bel canto as our base. Absolutely, you have to use it as your base. Okay. The tone rides on the breath. There's ring, ping, and buzz. Use your three checks for freedom, jaw, side to side, tongue, elongated side to side, and head swivel side to side, one dimensionally. If that doesn't interfere with your tone, that's pure bel canto. As long as your vibrato manifests and it doesn't go like a tremolo, uh, 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 you've got it. Now, once you have that, you have to take your intellect and say, okay, this is a country song. I've trained in pure bel canto, which actually manifests itself kind of like some of the lighter opera singers from years gone by. Okay. And if I was to use pure bel canto and I didn't use any country effect intellectually or, you know, moving towards the genre, here's what you'd get. I'm a little bit, uh, sorry, I'm a little bit country and a little bit rock and roll. <laughs> does that sound like uh, that would country? be country? That does not sound no, like country. that's not even in <laughs> Even the old ball. country, it yeah. doesn't sound and like no, it. No, it's not. <laughs> so what you got to do is you have to take your intellect and sing on the breath as best you can, but you change the sounds by using your mouth and leak through the nose in a different way. Like when I used to do Willie Nelson's On the Road again, if I sang it, pure bel canto, it would be, on the road again. I just can't wait to get on the road again. No. <laughs> there would be bodies stuck in the door trying to get out of the West country western concert. Right. So I use that approach and I go, on the road again. I just can't wait to get on that road again. Okay. You can hear I'm trying yeah. to use on the breath. And you can hear I countrified it a bit. Now, remember, my voice is damaged, so I can't give you the exact sound. Mm -hmm. Once Sunny's a little more trained, she's my student, she'll be able to give you that sound. You and go. it'll come in time. But that's how you do it. You actually have to use intellectual application to the pure, pure bel canto. You listen to whoever's singing the country sound. And if you're not country, because I just talked with a man yesterday who's becoming a pastor who who is country okay. and he has to work at not being country oh, when he sings okay. um uh, he sings on the praise team at church because they sing pop contemporary <laughs> so my gosh if you're going our god is an awesome god <laughs> our god is an awesome god he reigns new yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. so he has to work at it okay. and it's all done intellectually by using your mouth in a different shape. You still have to get that air to flow across the bands, but yes, there will be some percentage of compression. Every genre has compression. Yeah. I was thinking about that the other day, Sonny, mm -hmm. and I decided what it is is if you were just like a, a little bird that's always happy and you did pure bel canto, we'd always hear this kind of sing song, brainless sort of yeah. everything's great and life is a bowl of cherries. And But the thing is, that's not real life. Yeah. So when you get emotional and you, and you get into the deeper level of emotion, there's always some degree of compression even with pure bel canto, mm -hmm. but the percentage is very minimal okay. so that your voice doesn't suffer. Well, you don't start the song with a level of compression and then go beyond it. You start the song with whatever level of compression suits the genre of the song and you let the emotion carry you. And yes, if you get angry or you're in anguish, like when I used to sing the part of Jesus, why should I die? Would I go, why should I die? No, that's not very no. good acting. <laughs> I mean, it's terrible acting, and, and the song doesn't even yeah. lend itself no. to that. It's when Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. You know, you gotta. There's gotta be anguish there's in it, and yes, there's, yeah. there's compression. Yeah, of course. But you have to remember when to get out of that and use more freely produced sound. Okay, yeah. so are there any 
country music artists, you know, whether it's in yes. the past or current, mm-hmm. that you feel are doing a better job mm-hmm. singing on the breath? Yeah. One guy's name, I think, is, I think it's Jimmy Brown. I could be wrong. But I know the song is The Old Lamplighter. Okay. The Old Lamplighter. And that guy, way back in the 50s, he sang very much on the breath. So that was back in the 50s. Can you think 50s. of anyone more contemporary that our audience might, our YouTube audience I'm trying, might know? I'm trying. Um, <laughs> well, like, like the, I'm just going to throw out some popular artists, like Garth Brooks. Does he do anything yes, like Garth, that a little bit? Garth does. Garth was trained vocally, I think, at Juilliard, if I remember correctly. Oh, wow. Yeah, I think so. But I know he took vocal studies. And he actually did an album where he wasn't Garth Brooks. He actually called himself a different name, and he did hard rock. The whole album was hard rock. Oh, just to play around with the genre? And and he did it. He changed his style to show us. He even (laughs) changed his look, and he changed his name. And for a while, some people, including myself, were, were fooled by it. We went... This is a new singer out, you know, that's come out. But then it was revealed that it was Garth mm-hmm. under a different name. So you can singing. change genres. Yeah. And yeah. So you can change yeah. genres, and he proved it. But yes, he does. He does some pretty good singing. Uh, more of what I would more call, on the breath. Yeah, on the breath, like the rename of what we did with Bel Canto, pure Bel Canto. Okay. Yeah, Garth Brooks is a good one. Okay. Yeah, and also um, there was one other one I was thinking of in terms of women, Alison Krauss. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Alison Krauss. Mm-hmm. So look up, maybe look up some of those videos yeah. and see. How There's also happening. another one. I can't remember the name of the group, but it's If I Die Young, Bury Me Die Down on a Bed of Roses. Oh, I, know I used to know the name of that group. Put it in the comments. You guys are going to know that. I know. Yeah. Put it in the comments. And that lady sings very, very, very well with country. I mean, the tricky part is, is that country has been changing over the last yeah, couple has. decades Absolutely. or whatever, right? And so now it, it kind of has that poppy sound. Yeah, yeah, it's come into what we would call country pop rock. Right. It has rock yeah. mixed into it. It has pop mixed into it. It's not the same country at all. And uh, Blake Shelton is an example of that. Yeah, that's another good yeah. one, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Does he use a lot of compression with his voice? Yes. He does. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. So does Adam Levine, who's with Maroon 5, but he's not country. But I was just thinking about him because I talked with a student about him the other, just yesterday. Yeah. And he uses a lot of compression, and he squeezes the sound out like this. He has a very memorable but, voice. But does, very he make, but does he make distinct. it work? Yeah, it works for him. Yeah. However. How long is it going to work for him? Yeah, that's true. And if he doesn't have any allergies at all, mm-hmm. he might get double or triple the amount of years that those of us with allergies get. Yeah. All right, guys, if you want to learn more about Pure Bel Canto and learn how to preserve your voice, check out our website, purebelcanto.com. Sign up for that free one-on-one lesson with David. I mean, how awesome is that? And then if it's a good fit for you, consider joining the group class. So the end of it is, remember, I can't wait to get on the road again. (laughs) 